fishing tournaments, um, fun fishing, getting back to the Uribe's fishing with them, uh, learning a lot of techniques and swim bait. I've learned a lot from those guys because um, they're both a wealth of knowledge. You know, yeah. Fishing tournaments. I mean, I think Junior, the reason why he is so good because he's been fishing, I think, tournaments since his early teens, you know. So, uh, and him and Rachel are still very active. Very active. Um, you know, but you don't realize how much time people put in to get to where they're at. It's like with anything, when you do your, when you do it like it's a job, you just, you get, you get good at it. And fishing is definitely a skill set. It's, it's not luck. It helps to be lucky, but it's definitely a skill set. You can't count on it. No, you can't count on it. It's just persistence, timing, and capturing the opportunity when you have it. Um, and you better be ready. You can't you can't go out there and go ah, oh, my bait has two hooks on on it. I'll, it'll work. Nope. Right. You have to sharpen everything, preparation well in advance. You know before you make that cast. That's how those fish get caught. Rather than the boo hoo, you know you hear in tournaments. I lost this. I had this. Or it's some stuff you can't help. But because you're probably one of the more technically, um, what's the term I want to use here? You're one of the more technically savvy, for sure, anglers that I know. And you keep a lot of those, you know, variables that you said are within your control, under yeah. your control. I learned that from you. No, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Really? I'm, oh, yeah. I feel flattered. Thank you. Yeah, man. Some of that stuff, I thought I was just, I thought it was just. Oh, dude, I was, I was just like on. a sponge, man. <laughs> I you soak know. it all in. It's every little thing. And I take know, little things from everybody's attention. game, like Kobe yeah. still moves from Jordan. <laughs> it's attention to detail, learning, learning things that work because they'll always work. Um, anybody who fishes, who does it, I mean, they just have. Everybody has their own way of going through their tools and making mm -hmm. sure they're all fine-tuned. You know, because you're gonna if you're gonna spend the time and the money to go out there and you get an opportunity, you don't want to. You don't want to miss that opportunity because you were lazy and you didn't want to you didn't want to retie. Ah, I'm not going to worry about it, uh, or I, I don't want to sharpen my hooks or something like that because it, it's that's when that opportunity arises and you're like, Bink, boo hoo, you just lost that fish of a lifetime. Yeah, but I think you're, you're prepared and it comes together. You just like that just happened. Damn. Yeah. One of the points I want to keep driving home here is all these guys that we're interviewing, like yourself, you guys are all solid, fundamental anglers. You got, Most of you guys are multi-species guys. You're just well-rounded fishermen. That's yeah, not a coincidence of why you guys also excel targeting some of these bigger fish. Yeah, I mean, with anything, the more you're in nature, I don't care if you're catching trout bluegill catfish mm -hmm. you know or you're fishing offshore for bluefin i geek out making bait or, yeah like the other day I mean, I went lobster fishing <laughs> I took a sabiki out i was trying to catch mackerel i caught every species i got like 10 different species on a sabiki rig for you guys oh, that don't man. know what that is it's a little ganyan with these little fly things on it went out local i still have some like, of the most fun in my oh, life oh, doing crazy. that i was catching like sand bass and calico bass and smelt and rockfish and mm -hmm. whitefish and Bonita, lizard, and I had fun, you know, um, just trying to make some bait, you know, um, but just being out in nature, reading conditions, it's a fish or fish, yeah. and you can take one thing and then, you know, kind of put your spin on it and bring it over into something else, um, you know, like being aggressive from my saltwater background, mm -hmm. um, when I first started fishing tournaments, you know, growing up fishing on a sport boat, there's no net. You don't, I mean, you're on a sport boat. That thing, the deck of it's like six feet off the water. Then there's a rail. You're catching fish. You got to bounce them. Oh, yeah. How big are these fish on average? Saltwater fish? Well, yeah. I mean, for sand bass, they're like regular large like amounts. Like two, two to five pounds, two to maybe. Five pounds, and then barracuda, two, barracuda are a little bit bigger. Stuff like that. You got a little heavier tackle. But, so I, I remember fishing. That's where I learned how to bounce fish. <laughs> so, so fishing the, the fresh water, I still remember fishing with uh, Manny Bruno and his dad, Manny Sr. Uh, I started fishing with them and Joe G. And they look at me funny, you know? I just like bounce everything. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't know. I'm just like, well, why don't you get a net? I'm like, why? Why do I need a net? I mean, it's not like something that I can't control. If I stop, that fish is gonna come off. So yep. I'm just gonna yep. fish. I'm gonna fish the way I fish. If I feel I need the net, then I'm gonna say, you know, 
and, and the crazy thing is I get excited, but I don't get excited. I don't know, maybe I'm jaded, but I remember all my large fish when I caught them. It wasn't a matter of like, I wasn't shaking. I wasn't like, oh my God, I'm going to lose a fish. I'm like, oh, that's a good fish. It's in the boat now. Then I'm like, damn, that's a big ass fish. Totally fun, but it wasn't like I panicked or got all sketched or scared like I was ever going to lose the fish. Mm -hmm. I figured if I, would, if I lost the fish, I lost the fish. No, no big deal. I'll just it's try part to of catch, it. A, catch another one. That's know? right. Um, but, but having that salt water, that salt water knowledge and the aggressiveness in the ocean and taking all your tackle to its max. It gave you a different that's, perspective. Well, yeah, being in the technical side, knowing what, a, what, what it takes to break or bend a hook. Yep. What it takes to snap a rod or with anything and taking, you know, um, like Spectra when it first came out fishing in saltwater and applying it into the tournament scene. I was fishing Spectra in the tournament scene and like in the... 97, 90, nobody knew what that was. Now um, you got me fishing that for and, all my traditional and, and stuff. And some people like it, some people don't. And it's I funny because I went through that phase a couple times before it really started to set in. You know, you showed me fishing braid on a jerkbait setup that day at Pyramid and how much more <laughs> effortless that was, you know. I had to work so much less. Yeah. And I liked it for that application, and then I tried expanding on that for everything else, and it still didn't feel right because I grew up fishing mono yeah. and then a little floral. It, it, there's a lot of adjusting. But then now I can't go back. Yeah. It's it's night and day difference. Yeah. It's a game changer. Yeah. It's like, less effort, you know. Uh, things swim more. It's more efficient. Way more efficient. Um, you know, and there again, it's it's not one of those things you have to fish something you're confident with mm -hmm. you know, some people don't like it and they won't use it yeah you know, and they still do great you know right. so so you have to fish what feels comfortable for you but technically for me the benefits of braid, bring it down to the science uh, yeah, the braid makes sense technically the aspects you get the pros outweigh the cons for me um, and i've been using braid for a long time and, you know showing my friends in the tournament world who are fishing they're going like that's that's the deal and then of course the technical advances in braid technology mm -hmm. um, you it's know, definitely and, and come a long the, way the, the materials in the braid the new fluorocarbons and the new filaments in combination with your leaders the whole technical aspect of fishing has gotten better it's, it's pretty pretty crazy that you know like with all the the stuff that we have available to us uh, getting going a step further you know side scan technology yeah what is it the hydrosonic hydro waves hydro waves uh you, you know you go to these lakes and, and people still can't catch anything you're like you can see everything you know you've got, oh you've got, yeah i mean it's that whole deal it's like, the amount of info that's being relayed to us now exactly. versus even 10 years ago is Correct. insane it's insane the whole technical part but fish are still fish mm -hmm. sometimes you just can't make them bite you know but the whole tac technical aspect of it is, is, is changed tremendously but there again you're still dealing with mother nature when she wants to give it up she will when she doesn't and there's no amount of technology or no amount of millions of dollars you can spend to, 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 to buy that bite It'll happen when it happens, you know. Um, but it is, it's, it's pretty amazing the way things have advanced. Um, techniques, you would think everybody's done everything, and I'm sure there have, but it's in different combinations and mm -hmm. mixing it up. At the know. end of the day, it's still fishing. It is fishing, you know. I think you have to be technical, but you can be over over technically advanced where you get it get somebody who overthinks it way too much and mm -hmm. still is fishing still is a basic you know you have to remember yeah we have all this stuff but you have to remember you're targeting a fish that kind of does whatever mother nature tells it to do you need to read mother nature and use your electronics and the tackle you have to make it easier to figure out that bite you still can't overthink you know what they're going to do it's, it's still basic basic methods of, of baits catch fish Fundamentals. You know, funda fundamentals. You have to be good at fundamentals. And getting back to being multi species, which helps a lot of people and myself fish outside of the box. You know, taking a technique that I use down in, let's say, Sea uh, Cortez, fishing Cabrillo Pardo, translating that onto a lake. Mm. Like, how would you think that would work? But, you know, there again, you know, fishing more aggressively i mean speeding it up like really fast where you think a bass would need it but sometimes you know we've been out there where you're like 
dead of winter. You're fishing slow, and it's like something's telling you. And I always remember this is one thing. Little Joe Junior said, "Sometimes you gotta listen to that little voice in your head. It'll tell you of this." And it's that, and you just you, you don't listen to it. But when you start to listen to that, you get that weird like, dang. And then bingo, it's game of like taking a crankbait and or a, a rip bait and burning it like the, and then you start getting bit you yep know? um and then once you catch a fish that way you just you just thought outside the box to get the bite middle of winter you're throwing a jerk bait burning it and you're catching fish it had to happen at period cold water fishery like what the hell doesn't happen all the time but you know it happens i mean the the craziest one of my crazy experience i was out at paris it was dead i hadn't fished in like four years went out to the trench and people i mean i was literally dead sticking an ice jig <laughs> really <laughs> you're just holding it there i would i would see like i mean there was a couple it was weird though it was like we're in like when i think it's like the edges around the, the trench were like 15 foot Okay, so and the I'm top of it's in 15. I think, like 15, it's all the... So the it drops rockets. down into like 50. 50, and, and so I'm just trying everything. I'm not getting any re reaction out of fish. I can see on my side scan. I can see them. They're not paying to any attention to anything. So I don't know what it was, but thanks to Joe, that little hit, it's like throwing an ice jig. I'm going to try ice jig. Jig, deep, nothing. They're not following it. They're nothing. So I'm like seeing little jelly beans sitting on the bottom. I'd see one, and I'd see like a group of two or three. Drop it on the one. Like, so I'd let it sit there. And uh, kind of the weird thing is fishing at DVL, this is bringing a weird technique, fishing something completely different, is I remember taking a Senko and throwing it out and you would literally have schools of bass cruising. And they would sit there and they'd follow a Senko at the bottom and they'd all make like a little ring around it and stare at it. And you'd hop it or they'd, they'd look at it and they'd kind of swim away and then you'd move it a little and they'd look at it again. About two or three times and they'd take off, you know. For some reason, I'm thinking, okay, there's three fish. Maybe if they're grouped up, they'll eat. This is, I mean, yeah, unless you were there, you would probably think I'm. So um, I've, you, I've so, just so, edited a video of bass doing the same exact kind of behavior so, so, you're talking about. But you about. have to see it. I mean, anybody who's just thrown some bass just to watch what they do, I do that a lot. I don't even try to catch stuff. I'll just watch what they do. So I'm like thinking, okay, well, they're not really re reacting to anything, which is weird, but. I'm going to let it dead stick on the bottom. Who dead sticks an ice jig on the bottom? Nobody. So literally, I lay it on the bottom, and I can see that there's like three or four, three, three bass sitting around. I figure in groups of three or more, they're probably more competitive. So I'd let it sit there for 30 seconds, and I'd hop it up, a quick jab. And they'd actually kind of move. I could see them move. I'm like, that's the best I got. So I let it sit. Literally, on the second time I hop them, I was hooking these fish. Wow. I think I had like maybe three or four fish funny thing is i hadn't been there five years and i'm looking around and i was fishing it aggressively like normally and yeah. everybody's, nobody's catching anything there and i'm looking around and and they see me catch a fish and everybody's using a nice chick i'm like like i know what i'm doing i'm like i have no clue what i'm doing i'm just trying something completely You're trying i'm thinking outside the box and it seems to be working in that moment i only got like four or five fish i think total nothing big you know twos threes one little stuff but but they're again remembering an experience using something completely yes. different thinking outside of the box because when you're not getting anything you have to try something completely different because you ain't getting nothing anyway i find myself doing that exact you know? same thing on these cross-country adventures yeah just it's like you just start sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't yeah. but when it does work now you have a new method that nobody would ever believe you and i don't mm -hmm. care if you guys believe it or not but i know it worked for me at that moment will it ever happen again i don't know is it possible it'll happen again probably mm -hmm. in those conditions i'm sure it's not going to go out and use it again oh yeah i'm um, gonna try it <laughs> but <laughs> but it was it was just a tr and like like taking a swim bait and using it in a completely different way than it would normally work just yeah. because it's a large swim bait doesn't mean you have to swim it. It's funny, man. You I've know? read comments from people, you know, throughout the years. Like, oh, I already know how to fish that bait. It's like, oh, okay, cool, well, man. You can swim. You can do what. I'm glad mean, you figured you it all out. Yeah, because <laughs> I haven't figured out nothing, you know. And I think that's that's the that's key, though, thing. Mark. Is that uh, you know you you you're in a place mentally where you're you're not okay with 
thinking you figured it out. And no. You're always... Mal's humble. You're always trying something, like yeah. you're saying. That's how your brain works, yeah. and that's what has okay. allowed you to con- con- consistently stay productive. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Just like Mark. You know, Mark's brain works in a similar yeah. way you on the wall. always keep reinventing yourself when you don't think it works. Well, here's the I mean, deal. look at like this. We're on when, YouTube right now. Who would have thought that was ever going to happen? <laughs> when, when, when you don't catch anything, you're not catching anything anyway. You might as well try something that you're not comfortable with. Right. You may learn something new and actually catch something. And then, and then you're like, holy crap, I just did something off the wall. And, you know, as you get older, it's harder to think outside the box because you learn you know so you almost like have this wall so it's harder to break out where the, whereas a younger somebody who's a lot younger than you can come up with some crazy ideas you know? mm-hmm. and, and some of them may be off the wall but you know some of them may stick yeah exactly and, you know maybe you can build off some of those and I'm not saying change something if it's already working I'm worst case scenario when it's not working you know you've got to change the technique you know and, and Maybe you do it if you're just like a straight up big bait guy. You do it within the big bait genre because nowadays there's, there's so many there's, options. There's so many options, and every bait works differently. Every bait has a different cadence. Everybody, everybody has a bait out there to do something a little different than somebody else's bait. So, it, just in that genre alone, there's a lot more than when we when I mm-hmm. when I first learned about swim baits. It was very basic techniques, but you still have to understand the basic and fundamentals and the starting points of how each bait works and let's then, let's bring it back to the it, fundamentals a little yeah. bit call that weathered og over here so he can tell us about that 12 pounder that pyramid yeah hey weathered <laughs> og we need some uh, insight man come on stop hiding he is such a non-typical bass fisherman he's such like that guy's a bass fisherman he's like a total hipster he's he's a total hipster like Crazy a computer, that's yeah. That's that's his action. That's yeah. A one. yeah. That's actually a. That, that's a no. That's <laughs> that's a big smallmouth. That's a tw- how big? That would be a big one. Yep. That's a thirty-three pound smallmouth. That Eldo, is, right? Yeah. No, that's a Great Lakes fish. <laughs> that's a great. That's how big they get there. That's a big one. That's yeah. great. So Dave DeLuca was with you when you caught that 12 on a jerk bait. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was blown out cast. with his back laying in the boat. Cast, cast. What time of year is this? When, oh, that was uh, that was uh, June 20, June 25th. June Dang, 20th. look at June you guys. 20th. The reason why I know, this is the crazy thing behind that story was that was the one year anniversary that my anniversary that my dad had passed away. Oh wow! So on that day, the next year, I went up to to Pyramid. Maybe it was a gift, but you know, that's when I caught that fish. So that's kind of like a kind of a, a special moment too. Absolutely. To have a day like that, exactly one year. It was it was June twenty eighth, two thousand six. So um, on a jerk bait. Um, but he was with me. Worst sunburn of my life. He was worst sunburn of life. Had a big ass blister on his head. He was uni blister. Oh um, man. And uh, it was it was a pretty pretty crazy fun day. So, but he's like that guy. Oh, we're super gonna get techno, some stories out of. Super technical. Super technical. Dominating the Casitas trails right now. Casitas? Tournament life. Eight years. Eight years. Okay. Eight He's years. the only guy I still know that actually fishes that place. <laughs> I know. Seriously. Newman and Evans fish it too. Yeah. Me, Matt Newman, Brian Evans fish it. Okay. Awesome I sticks. Great 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 great. Um, and he's, uh, you know, been coming up in the ranks. And what did you get this year? Day All whoa, right. Whoa. 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 Yeah. Daytime. Daytime. <laughs> you won a daytime though, didn't yeah, you? Come oh, on. Yeah. There you go. Look at this guy. Super technical. This See, guy is be like, like these people. Be very humble. Very technical. <laughs> Hey, we do this trout tournament. Right? Oh, Round okay, trout. yeah. Lake Crawley, this guy. Oh, yeah, you guys for, for take guy, bass Lake fishing Crawley in techniques. California here, take bass taking. There you go, thinking outside the box. Super technical bass fisherman taking that into uh, a lake and like going, you know, throwing hard baits like rip baits and, and rip trolling techniques. And drop com- shotting. Drop, well, yeah, drop. I fish and drop shot midges. They're like number 22s 
anybody who fishes multiple species, you know, they're small. It's a midging technique, fly fishing, which I'm not really a fly fisherman at all, but I go, I'm going to drop shot them instead of fishing from the top down, which is like a crappy bobber mm -hmm. setup. Fishing from the bottom up, and that, that, that works really good. Uh, we did that for guy, the smallies a little bit. Really? Tried it? Worked good? Mm -hmm. That's, you know, there again, you take techniques and change them up and reinvent them, and, and it all works. You just have to think outside the box. You can't just say, this is only for this. It is not only for that. Fish are fish. They're aggressive, you know, you, and the bigger they are, the more aggressive they are. Sometimes it's not that they're aggressive, they're curious. You yeah. Know, they throw something Predators are, them. you know, overall curious creatures. Yeah. They have to be. Yeah. I, people come in and like, you tell them like, a lot of fish are like two year old kids. They put everything in their mouth. <laughs> That's a great analogy. S straight up. Because if fish had hands, 90 to 95% of the times you'd hook them in their hands. They'd be like, ah, <laughs> you know. It, it's all about what is that? Well, how do they feel stuff? They grab it, they squeeze it in their mouth, and they spit it out. You guys ever fish plastic baits where you feel something pick it up? And you're like, what was that? You weren't sure it was a bite, you wind it up. I'm anal, I look at my worm, I'm like, Oh, I got bit. Mm -hmm. I didn't even feel it. Or sometimes I'm working a bait. I didn't even feel a bite. And it's got bite marks, you know, halfway oh, yeah. in the middle of it. You know, or a swim bait. You wind your swim bait in, and you look at it, and you're like, this is a new bait. It's got little sandpaper teeth mark in it. I never felt that fish grab it. There again, attention to detail. How is that, how is that fish biting that, that bait? You know, and then adjusting. You need to speed it up, slow it down, change the cadence. You know, taking one clue and building and, on and that. Building it on. I mean, I. It's it's. It, you take the 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 cast, which is. You ask every time you pick up something, whether it's a swim bait or whatever it is, and you throw it out there. You're asking a fish a question, and when you don't get bit, it's a no, right? If you get a bite and he doesn't stick, not not a bite where you hook him and he comes off. If you feel a thump or a thud. Or maybe you wound in the bait, you're, you're, you pay attention to your baits, you look at them, you take clues. Well, that was a maybe, you ate it. He's not committing. You want to get the yes. When you're on it, you're getting yeses all day long, you know, because you're asking the right questions. Um, but adjusting, taking those clues, those little hints to be successful, you know. It's a bit of feel, uh, intuition, uh, technical savvy and reading mother nature there's got to be a balance there's a pie you've got to you've got to master each one you can't be too much on one because you overthink stuff so it's, it's a lot of it is is feel. piecing the puzzle exactly you know putting those puzzle pieces together um, we already did that shirt oh, but it, oh yeah i think i said that <laughs> show, show us the triple trout for the some of the people that might not know what it is old school because you still got a pretty good supply of them here this and and show me one that was close to the one that you were fishing back then. I don't think I have them in there. I think I see some sixes there, and maybe a seven. This color hasn't changed. Yeah, so that's the light trout. There you thanks. Still a great bait. Absolutely. It's a bread and butter bait. It's just funny because you know it's it's been so long that it's been out now. People have forgotten about it. You know, and you look at this thing compared to some of the other options and. It looks pretty basic. It is. But right. I mean, look at, what is a jig? Right. It's oh. a, a oh, okay. painted leadhead with some skirt on it. Uh -huh. What is a spinnerbait? What is a crankbait? It's a round thing with a plastic bill. It wobbles eyeballs. out of control. It wobbles out of control. I mean, a lot of your baits just, you know, they have different colors, different shapes, but, you know, it's all of the basic, basic techniques work. And then knowing how to apply those basic techniques, you know. So. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing with us, Mr. Agashi. Thanks for being a positive influence on the fishing community, man. Man, broke me into this. Now I gotta do bills again, dang it. <laughs> Wasn't that a nice break? Yeah, I guess. Going to down, down memory buy me lane? Oh, man, I guess I owe you dinner now. <laughs> Gosh. Well, we Thank might you. as well. Yep. All right, guys, catch you guys on the next one. Maybe we'll do one with Big Joe over there. Oh, Calico guy. Uh oh. Right there. Big Talking Calico about some Dreams. Cross, cross techniques right there. I like it. You, you still got that album with all the old school pictures that you used to have? Yeah. Dig that out real quick, man. We gotta flip through some of this. We, old school? Yeah. We gotta we need some confirmation of these stories. 
And if you guys are ever in the Southern California area, you guys have to come check out this shop, even without weathered OG walking down the aisles. Come on, check it out. Salt water, fresh water, all the goodies. A lot of amazing fishermen cut their teeth in this shop. Oh snap, look at that. These are so old. Smart. You got you even got like the borders on them, the watermarks. What are you doing in the dark, Kelly? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Put that phone away, bro. <laughs> oh man. We're looking for the All the shenanigans bait. goes on back there, huh? Secret bait? I was asking oh, if you still had that old school photo album you guys used to have on display. Cause he's telling all kinds of fish stories. We got to substantiate them somehow. So everybody's got the stories, but who's got the goods? Is that it? Here, give me a hand. Got that. Just a story if you don't have the proof. That's right. Take a picture, put it on a scale, measure it. Oh man. This is like before we had like media storage media for this internet. was storage media before the internet this, believe that kids the time before internet <laughs> those kids don't know what that means <laughs> even you know when we had to bust out those photos of, of baby nephilis yesterday baby like they don't nephilis? they don't understand the struggle that was you know the taking a roll of film to, to get, get it developed, developed. And hoping Saltwater. the pictures came out no, that's okay. cool there's got to be some of those big bass in there somewhere but you somewhere. know there's a lot of saltwater stuff in here i think oh look at that uh oh what is that thing? He's on the wall. You're not on the wall. No. He yeah, is, he is. He is. Right oh. Go look at that thing. Man, that's one big bug. Yeah, <laughs> a big crawdad. <clears throat> it's a big cucaracha. They don't have hooks big enough for that, so. <laughs> would you nose hook that, Kelly, back in the day? <laughs> I would. <laughs> <laughs> and throw it on the barbecue. Yeah, oh, man. I have no idea. You got to just go through the memory lane. I have no what's in there. Oh, oh, look, at oh look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That yeah, is one ugly color. <laughs> yeah, it's a low rider. Uh, oh, Lake see. Paris. Uh oh. Dude, Lake that. Paris. Is that the one uh, on the seducer in yeah. the video? Looks much bigger in the picture. <laughs> that looks actually pretty big. It wasn't that big. That's pretty awesome. That's a lot of this is all too. Look at that boat. That boat is fishy. A lot of big swim bait fish are falling in that boat. This is mostly saltwater stuff, I think. Okay. Yeah. Some people might know that guy. Oh, look at uh, oh, oh, snap. Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> Multi species right there. Cute barracuda, Joe. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Seriously, man, there's a lot to be said for yeah. different experiences. You know, it goes a long oh, way. Look at that. Oh, man. Justin. Radio silence in the house. Yep, back in the day. Spotties. Those are big spots. Sandies. <laughs> oh. There's what there's what do they call it? Gray pride? <laughs> That's what they make, that's what they call my boy Eric Johnson. Oh, great he's pride. Trying to clown on him. Oh, look at that. Stomping on him. Sport boat, Dude, look sea at bass. That. Look at that hairdo Just, though, yeah. Jay. I see you, bro. <laughs> this is back in the Those day. Those are big sea bass. Oh yeah, sport boat style. Man, that's yeah. awesome. Got the DFG hat on. Uh huh. That's gangsta. It's like old. old. Justin's always been swaggy. Oh, oh dear, look at those calories. This is big bass streams, and those are calico bass. Look at those things. That's dope. Yeah. Beautiful. Taking fish. it back, man. Like I said, a lot of amazing anglers cut their teeth in this shop. Um, Look at Spiro. Spiro. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All our shop locals and legends, man. All these local legends. So much stuff in here. Dang, Spiro, I didn't know you got down like that, bro. <laughs> got the piercings? All this stuff. You got that picture of, of uh, weathered OGs double on the triple trout in yeah. here? Oh, you know what? I think it. I think it is in here somewhere. I could have sworn it was in this photo album because that's a story I've been trying to get him to tell for weeks. Look at Ullery. 
Jumbo. Those are big smallmouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they are, aren't they? Dead as a doornail. That's Just kidding, big, guys. A, those are probably some kind of grouper. Cabria. Oh, those oh, are Cabria. They're, they're junior. Junior again. Can't weigh those in at FLW, Joe. They're, they're bent. Crazy. Saltwater bass anglers. God. Crazy. That's this in is here cool. somewhere. I don't know where. Yeah, I think we had two books. One was freshwater and one was all the parts. Up, up, up. Old See? school. Little ones you got to start at the park. Ah, that was a long time ago. Look at that. Park bass. Fun park yeah, bass. Another smallmouth. Oh. <laughs> We're going to do one of those gear. trips with you one day, Mark. Oh, dude, the boys just went. They had a pretty phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where that one is. It's got to be in here somewhere. Dookie, where's your two handed jumbo ness? That was a pretty insane picture back in those days. Oh, yeah. It's got to be in here somewhere. Worthy of story. Worthy of story. All these bass. All these Do you remember that picture of oh. the... Oh, no. <laughs> There it is. There it is. How ridiculous is that? 19 pounds, one cast. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember when he's he called. hiding. He hides. I still when he called All Mark right, man. here and said, gotta... "Dude, I got 19 pounds." When he, I remember like, that he called. He goes, like, like, "Yeah, give it to us." Got 19 pounds. Break it down. No, he calls the shop. No, he texts me. I think. Yeah. Dude, they could, I just got like 19. There were text messages eight. back then. Yeah. Well, what was that? <laughs> when was that? It came by carrier that was pigeon. A <laughs> I go, I go, he was like, "I'm at Casitas, 198." Yeah. I'm all 198. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Well, he, he, I mean, I was like, I mean, he's got two jumbos, but it's still, I was like, I was still sick, but I thought he got a 1980 Casitas. I was like, dang. That's and crazy. But it was, it was explained, no, it was, what was it? 10, 9, 8, 5. 10, 9, and an 8, 5. I mean, that's one of those photos that really <laughs> inspired a young, skinny, little Asian guy. <laughs> um, that, man, this stuff is real. And I want to be doing things like this, which I still haven't done, by the way. A double? I hate you. Need you. a big double. I finally crazy. had two smallmouth on uh, Diamante, actually, uh -huh. uh, in South Dakota on at the nice. same time. First time I've, I've hooked two fish at oh, once wow. ever on a, you know, a single lure. Oh, that's cool. But like, I always think back to this actual photo yeah. and how gnarly that must have been. <laughs> that's pretty sick. Can you guys wave him over here? He's being he's super so secretive. He's such a secretive guy. He's so not, though. He he's, 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 hey, you gotta do the phone on like when you when you're over there, when, you know, do this the yeah, camera hidden cool. yeah. or one of those like visor cameras. Yeah, like, the visor cam. Man, the creeper, the creeper cam. The creeper cam. I've seen weird websites like that, man. Exactly. Weird it's ones. Well, Kelly, he's pretty private, you know. Yeah. He's a private guy. He's one of those <laughs> guys. Let's see, see, look, bass historian. Yep. Seen it. You guys know this man. Yeah. Well, now. Welcome. You've got a growing fan base. <laughs> see, see, he won't even look at the I'm camera. Cutting, I'm cutting. <laughs> yeah. He won't. No eye contact there. I'm cutting my hair. 2018. Oh, dude, you're gonna start Shame. seeing people at the tournaments with Kelly Poopo wigs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll rock one. Uh, shaved, shaved head. 2018. Yeah. That'll be on the right. uh, essentials of, page on so Big much Bass Dreams. Out there that's just gonna go away when people leave this earth that the stories behind it that damn bro he's still standing up. next to us man come on <laughs> <laughs> that's cold-blooded <laughs> <laughs> but that's real you know that's why we're doing a lot of this is to document and share with you guys a lot of the same inspiring stories that drove a lot of us so here it is 19 how much 19 Six, what? What? Yeah. all right we're gonna track this dude down you might as well do this now no, instead no, of like no. when you're in your underwear. No. Come on, no. dude. Give this man a coffee. He doesn't dude, my battery's gonna die eventually. Just, you're, you're making the karma work just give too hard. The story. Just give the story. Just, just give the no, story, no, dude. No, no, no. Look. Look I pretend you're that guy, that badass. Oh, oh, look like 